Hello everyone, welcome back to our course series of Python for Data Science, in this video we will continue our discussion about sequence data. In this session, we are going to explore some of the methods that we can apply to sequential data types like strings, lists, tuples, and more. During this lecture, we will explore the built-in methods available in Python for working with sequential data. But before we get started, let us clarify what methods are in Python. Methods are similar to functions, but they must be called on an object. Think of them as actions or operations that you can perform on a specific object or data type. Python provides a rich set of built-in methods that you can use on sequential data types, allowing you to manipulate and transform the data in various ways. It's important to note that these methods will create new values or modified versions of the data, but they won't change the original data itself. This is particularly useful when you want to preserve the original data while performing specific operations. So first we create a string sequence named str sample having string sequence learning Python is a great fun and let us print to verify the same. Now we will try to call some of the methods on string but as explained earlier that the methods will return new value it will not change the original one. First, we will look into the capitalize method initially, our string str sample is in all lowercase, as you can see. Now, let's apply the capitalize method to this string. After applying the capitalize method, we get a new string learning Python is a great fun, so, what did the capitalize method do? Well, it transformed the first character of the string to uppercase, while leaving the rest of the characters unchanged. The capitalize method is particularly useful when you want to ensure that the first character of a string is capitalized, which is a common requirement in various scenarios, such as formatting names, titles, or sentences. It's important to note that the original string str sample remains unchanged. As discussed earlier the capitalize method creates a new string object with the capitalized version, leaving the original string intact. As you can see, the original string str sample still holds the value learning python is a great fun, all in lowercase. Next, we will try title method, so python provides a handy method called title that can automatically capitalize the first letter of each word in your string, just like a title. Let's see how this works with our str sample string. We can use the dot notation to call the title method on str sample. This will convert the first letter of each word in str sample to uppercase, making it look like a proper title. So, if we run this code, the output will be, learning Python is a great fun, with the first character of each word capitalized. Let us now see the swap case method, the swap case method transforms the case of all the letters in your string. For example, uppercase becomes lowercase, and the lowercase becomes uppercase, while keeping numbers and symbols unchanged. This will swap the case of all the letters in str sample. So, running this code would result in, learning Python is a great fun, all in uppercase. The actual output depends on the original case of the letters in str sample. Remember, swap case also creates a new string with the swapped case. It doesn't modify the original string itself. Let us now discuss about find method. Imagine you're searching for a specific word in a long document. The find method in Python acts like a search tool for your strings. It helps you locate the starting index of the first occurrence of a specific substring within your string. So, let's search for the word Python. This code will search for the substring Python inside str sample. If Python is found, the output will be the index where it starts. In our example, the output would be 9, since p is at the ninth index. Here's a crucial point to remember, if the substring isn't found in the string, the find method returns minus 1. So, you can use the result of find to check if your search was successful. A value greater than or equal to 0 means the substring was found, and minus 1 indicates it wasn't present. Moving to the count method, so, have you ever wondered how many times a specific letter appears in a word or how many times a word shows up in a sentence? The count method in Python comes in handy for these counting tasks. 
Suppose you want to know how many times the letter E appears in STR sample. This code will count the number of E in STR sample running this code would likely to output 2, since there are 2 E in the string. Key points to remember here about count is that it counts the occurrences of the exact substring you provide, not individual characters. It searches the entire string by default. It returns zero if the substring is not found in the string. The count method is a helpful tool for various tasks involving finding the frequency of elements within strings. Let us now discuss about modifying the string with the replace method. Imagine you're writing a document and realize you've misspelled a word throughout. The replace method in Python is a powerful tool for replacing substrings within your strings. This code will replace all occurrences of the substring Python in str sample with Java and store the new string in the variable new str. So, running this code would result in learning Java is a great fun. Key points to remember about replace by default, it replaces all occurrences of the substring. You can optionally specify the number of replacements to make using a third argument. It creates a new string with the replacements. The original string remains unchanged. The replace method is a versatile way to modify your strings and is useful for various text manipulation tasks. Next, we will discuss about the isAl number method. In data science, working with clean and accurate data is crucial. When dealing with text data, you might often need to check if a sequence contains only letters, uppercase or lowercase, and numbers, 0 to 9. This is where the isAl number method comes in handy. So, you call isAl number method on your string variable. It then inspects each character in the string. If all the characters are letters or numbers, it returns true. This indicates a valid alphanumeric sequence, useful for data analysis. If there's even one character that's not a letter or number like a space, symbol, or punctuation, it returns false. This lets you know the sequence might contain unwanted characters. Key points to remember here are. Is L number is case sensitive. Hello 123 is alphanumeric, but Hello 123 is not. It strictly checks for letters and numbers, excluding special characters. The real world uses of Is L number in data science are. Data cleaning, before analysis, you can use is ALN um to identify and potentially remove unwanted characters from text data, ensuring cleaner datasets. Feature engineering, when creating new features from text data, is AL number can help filter out non-alphanumeric parts that might not be relevant for your analysis. Input validation, if you're working with user input like file names or search queries, is AL number can help ensure they only contain valid characters, improving data integrity. By understanding is L number, you can effectively manage alphanumeric data in your Python data science projects, leading to more reliable and accurate analysis. So let us now move to string formatting with format method, so the string formatting helps you create nicely formatted text by inserting values into specific positions within a string. So, we will create three variables for example. Name 1 equals Alex. Name 2 equals private and name 3 equals limited. And then using format method, so in this example, you replace curly braces in the string with the values of name 1, name 2, and name 3, creating the formatted string Alex private limited. Next, we will explore the string methods with D, I, R, and help. The D, I, R function shows all the things, like tools or tricks, you can do with a string or any other object. And the help function gives you helpful information about how to use specific tools or tricks with strings or other objects. So print D R name shows what you can do with the string object and help str shows how to use string methods. Now we will discuss some of the common methods used on sequential data types. You can use various tools with different kinds of data like strings, lists, dictionaries, sets, and ranges. So, the len function, counts how many things are in a data type. The reverse function, changes the order of things in a list. And the clear, 
removes all things from a data type. Here's an example. In this example, the len function counts how many letters are in a string, the reverse function changes the order of items in a list, and the clear function removes all items from lists, dictionaries, and sets. Now we will be discussing about the append method. The append method in Python is used to add elements to objects like arrays, lists, and sets. Let us now explore how this method works with easy to understand examples. So first we will see the example of adding elements to arrays and lists. The elements of arrays and lists can be modified with the append method which allows us to add elements at the end of these objects. So, in the example 1, you can see that the element 5 is added to the end of array. In example 2, the new list 2 and 4 is added as a single element to the existing list underscore sample. Next, we will see adding elements to sets, as we know that sets are unordered collections of unique elements. While sets do not support append method, we can use the add method to include elements. Note that the add method only accepts a single parameter, adding one element at a time to the set. So, in this example we can see that number 20 is added to the existing set. In summary, the append method is used to add elements to arrays and lists at the end. For sets, the add method accomplishes the task of adding elements. Understanding these methods is crucial for manipulating data structures effectively in Python. Next, we will discuss about updating sets with update method which allows us to add multiple elements from another set or data structure. The update method in sets is used to add elements from another set or compatible data structures like lists, tuples, or dictionaries. This method enables us to add multiple values at once to an existing set. In this example, the update method adds the elements from the list 5 and 10 to the existing set set underscore sample. Now we will see update method for the compatible data structures. The update method can accept sets, lists, tuples, or dictionaries as arguments. Any data structure passed as an argument will be automatically converted into a set before adding its elements to the existing set. In this example, the tuple, 7, and 15, is converted into a set, and its elements are added to the existing set. So, in summary. The update method in sets adds elements from another set or compatible data structures. Compatible data structures include sets, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Data structures passed as arguments are automatically converted into sets for updating. Understanding how to update sets using the update method is essential for managing and manipulating sets efficiently in Python. Next, we will discuss about working with dictionaries in Python, the dictionaries in Python are containers that store key-value pairs. The various operations supported by the dictionary are 1. Adding and updating key-value pairs, dictionaries support adding new key-value pairs and updating existing ones. So, this example we have updated the existing dictionary with key and value pair as key 3 and value 3. And in the next the existing dictionary is been updated with the key value pair, key 4 and value 4. 2. Accessing and manipulating dictionary data. There are several methods that allow us to access and manipulate data within dictionaries. So, dictionaries allow adding and updating key value pairs using assignment operator or the update method. As shown in example methods like keys, get, len, and items help in accessing and manipulating dictionary data efficiently. Understanding these dictionary methods is essential for effectively managing data in Python dictionaries. Next, we will discuss about inserting elements with insert method, which allows us to add elements at specific positions in arrays and lists. In both examples, the insert method is used to add elements, 100, and 24, respectively, at specific positions, 1 and 4, respectively, within the arrays and lists. In summary, the insert method adds elements at specified indices in arrays and lists, and it takes two arguments, the index where the element should be inserted and the element itself. Next, we will discuss pop method. The pop method removes elements at specified indices from arrays, lists, sets, and dictionaries. Example 1. In this example, 
the element at index 4, which is the fifth element, is removed from the array, and the removed element is stored in popped underscore element. Example 2, in this case, the key value pair corresponding to the key second is removed from the dictionary, and the removed value is stored in removed underscore value. We will now move on to remove method. The remove method deletes the first occurrence of a specified value from arrays, lists, dictionaries, and sets. Example 1, removing element from list. Here, the string banana is removed from the list. Example 2, removing element from set. In this case, the integer 3 is removed from the set. Now we will discuss discard method, so the discard method removes a specified element from sets if it exists, without raising an error if the element is not found. Here, the discard method is used to attempt to remove 5 from the set, and since 5 is not present, no changes are made to the set. Now, we will discuss using del keyword, the del function is used to delete entire object or specified elements from arrays, lists, dictionaries, and sets. Example 1, deleting entire object. In this example, the del keyword is used to delete the entire array underscore sample object, and attempting to access it afterwards results in a name error. Example 2, deleting elements by index range. Here, elements at index 1 and 2 like, banana, and cherry, are deleted from the list, leaving only apple. Now let's break down the extend method. The extend method adds elements from a specified iterable, like a list, tuple, set, etc., to the end of the current list. For example, adding tuple elements to list, in this example, the elements from the tuple, 6, 7, and 8, are added to the end of the array underscore sample list using the extend method. Example 2, adding list elements to array, in this example the elements of the from underscore list are added to the array underscore sample using extend, effectively extending the array with the new elements. Now we will discuss, converting array to list, so you can convert an array to a regular list using the toList method. Example, converting array to list, in this example, the toList method converts the array to a regular list named regular underscore list, preserving the same elements. Understanding how to extend lists and convert data types is useful for managing and manipulating data in Python effectively. Next, we will discuss about set operations. A set in Python is an unordered collection of unique elements, making it ideal for storing unique values or extracting unique elements from other collections. First, we will discuss about the union operation. The union operation combines elements from two sets into a single set, removing duplicates. In this example, the union of sets A and B contains all unique elements from both sets. Second, we will look into intersection operation. The intersection operation finds common elements between two sets. Here, the intersection of sets A and B includes only the element data, which is common to both sets. Third, we will look into symmetric difference operation. The symmetric difference operation finds elements that are unique to each set, excluding common elements. The symmetric difference of sets A and B contains elements that are unique to each set, excluding data, which is common. These set operations are useful for various tasks such as data filtering, finding common elements, and managing unique values efficiently. So, in this lecture, we explored various methods that can be applied to sequential and non-sequential data in Python for data science which methods allow us to manipulate data structures effectively, adding, removing, and performing operations as needed. In our next video, we will discover the powerful world of data science with the NumPy library. NumPy is a fundamental tool for numerical computing in Python, offering efficient data structures and operations for handling large datasets with ease. Join us as we explore the key functionalities of NumPy from a data science perspective, including array manipulation, mathematical operations, and data analysis techniques. We hope that you have found this course informative. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more informative Python for data science content. Your support means a lot and motivates us to create more educational resources for you. Stay tuned for the next lecture where we'll continue our journey through Python's data science course.
Thank you for watching.